Well, welcome back to the channel, guys, and apologies for the hat. It's absolutely freezing in my office, like ridiculously cold. I can barely feel my hands. Um, I haven't done any sort of river vlogs recently, but what I've been doing is amassing a load of little bits of footage and a bit, of, uh, a few clips and a bit of the action and stuff from recent trips. So I've been doing quite a bit of chug fishing, I've even a bit of perch fishing on lures recently. Um, and I thought I'd just have a catch up with you now and just talk you through what happened. So my first sort of uh, obsession, if you like, was trying to catch a decent perch out of the River Neen, or Nen, as my wife calls it. Um, now, I know there is some decent perch in the in the river. It's one of them. It's just locating them. And as I found out, they're the most temperamental creatures I've ever fished for. Big perch on rivers. The conditions not only have to be perfect, but you've got to be there at the right time of day. You've got to be there when they're feeding. The feeding windows are really short. Um, and even when you found them, doesn't mean you're going to catch them again. Like I heard a lot. I got a lot of advice off Matt Woods from Corum. Uh, I watch a lot of stuff that Nick Marsh does on river fishing for big perch and all of their sort of talk was once you find the perch they tend to not move far but you just got to keep fishing that area um, and sort of go be there on the right day kind of thing so I had a few areas in mind I did a, I had a few trips at Ringstead um, didn't really catch many perch there but I never felt I was there on the right day um, and then I ended up at a, a, a stretch that I've done really well with Chubb on uh, near Great Doddington. Uh, and there was a swim that I'd, be, I'd caught Chubb from in the past and I thought, this has got potential for perch. This was last year and I caught some really big Chubb from the swim. And I thought, hmm, there's a chance here that this could hold some perch. Anyway, I, I'd never caught, I'd never caught, I'd never caught. I kept trying it, I'd never caught. And then, um, I'd been catching them further away from the area. I was just using squirms. I, to be honest, I went on, a, it was getting out of hand. I was buying lures left, right and centre. In fact, look, have a look at this. Load of lures bought off Angling Direct. This perch thing's getting out of hand. Let's see what we've got. We've had a delivery for you. Ah, oh. oh, look. <laughs> squirms, squirms, squirms. Some motor oil ones. Got some reggies, I like the reggies. Started catching a few on these. Now the silverfish squirms have been my best colour so far. So I'm gonna give the old silverfish reggie a try. What else we got? Some dark ones, which I think might match the natural colour of the uh, crayfish a bit better than the real ale ones, you never know. We've got some sil more silverfish reggies. So a bit of a, sil bit of a reggie delivery. A couple of jig heads and stuff. Really struggling to get them at the minute. These are the only ones they had in stock. So we've got a few different jig heads, different weights and stuff. Yeah, this lure fishing's getting out of hand, isn't it? So as you can see, it was getting out of hand. I'm buying lures. Um, I'm ordering lures. I'm just trying everything. Really trying to catch these fish because obviously I was thinking maybe my setup's wrong, maybe what I'm using's wrong. But in reality, I just wasn't there at the right time of day. Um, so I kept going back, I kept persevering, I was trying to catch these these fish and I just, I don't know, this bend, it's sort of a swan neck, it sort of goes up like that, it comes back round and like that and I just fancied that this bend and I felt if I got there on the right day, surely there'd be a perch or two there. Um, the only thing I was really catching, I was catching an odd perch uh, near a lock, I was catching a few perch there every session just to sort of keep my confidence up that I was catching on the right sort of lure and stuff. Um, and then eventually, after all my hard work, I kept catching some little pike. They're just so common on the on the river. Every single session, you seem to catch two or three of these little 10-ounce pike. Um, but eventually, my perseverance paid off. Um, I dropped in. I just so happened to notice I've got like a... I've spoke about this before. I've got a barometer on my phone. And the air pressure plunged one afternoon. It was, an, it was like a, a Saturday afternoon slash evening it was when it was getting dark at half three. Um, I said to my wife, I need, to, I just need to nip out. And I literally went, it was down to 980 millibars. It was overcast. The river was just up. It wasn't too much. The water was still decent clarity. And I headed down there and I caught him pretty much first chuck. I flicked a little squirm out, the little silverfish squirm, the white one. And, well, have a look at this.
Here we go. This feels different. Oh yes. This is what we come for. This is what we come for. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> look at that. Whoa. God. Look at that. Oh my days. That's massive. Oh my God. That is huge. Look at that thing. Absolute dinosaur. My hunch about this little slack has paid off. I'm gonna weigh him. Look at that, the old silverfish squirm. Oh my days, that is massive. Right, let's get some scales ready. Two pound. Two eight. <laughs> Oh, look at this. <laughs> what a beast. Two pound eight. River Neen perch. <sighs> Amazing. Second chuck in a bit of a slack here that looked, uh, certainly looked the part. And we've got one. I wanted to try and catch a two pounder. And uh, we've got one, so what an amazing creature. We'll get him, we'll get him back. But what fish, amazing, made up with that. As you can see, beautiful perch, beautiful fish. Two pound eight, uh, cracking river neem perch. Now, I've no doubt if I persevered, I would catch some bigger ones, but obviously we've only got so much time and the chub campaign had to get underway. The perch were a nice distraction while I felt like it was a bit, the, the river seemed a bit, It'd been quite low throughout December. We'd had one decent sort of flush through, but it was quite low and it just didn't feel right yet for Chubb. And I wanted to obviously catch some perch and do something a bit different, but perch season was calling, uh, Chubb season was calling, and I was desperate to get back on the, on the banks with cheese paste. Now again, a few sessions, very slow to start with. Uh, and I was going to all my areas that I like to fish. Um, and I was catching fish, but not really what I was sort of looking for, smaller chub um, and just odd fish. It, it didn't feel like the fish were where I was catching them last year. The deeper areas weren't holding the fish yet. Um, so what I was doing, uh, I was just waiting and then eventually again, spotted a day where the, the uh, I use an app called Windy and it sort of shows you a map of England. It shows you where the pressure systems are. Spotted on the map that a low was coming in it was overcast, the river would just fine down nice. It was a perfect day to go. Um, and I went along and I caught 11 chub. God, that's a good one. That could be six. That could definitely be six. I had one six pound two. I had some fives, I had some fours. I just had a brilliant day fishing. It was one of those days, you get this feeling every now and again on the river where you just know you're gonna get a bite wherever you chuck your bait. You know, obviously within reason, but any sort of chubby swim, I knew I was going to catch some fish. Look at them, look at them monsters. Brace of fives, and I dare say, in another month or two's time, they'll be well over six pounds then. They're very, very hollow fish, but wow. Amazing, amazing. Let's slip them back. And that was one of those days. It was just, it was just great fishing. I was getting bites quick, uh, good fish. Fish were a bit empty though, and I was catching bigger fish in swims I've never caught bigger fish before. So I still believe that they're, they're still out in the countryside bits and they're moving to the deeper areas. Probably now, now it's, it's gone really cold now and I would imagine they're packing into them deeper areas now where I caught them before. But the shallower swims were actually really good at, uh, at that time. I had some beautiful fish. I, I love this shot, this brace shot. They're two fives, they are beautiful fish. I had a six two that day. The six two was a big fish. And I think if I, if I caught that in, end of Feb time, it'd be a seven pounder, to be honest, because it was so empty. It was hollow, the fish, you could squid it. Its belly was like totally empty, massive frame on it. Wouldn't be far off seven pounder, I wouldn't have thought. Certainly a big six. So great fishing. 
Uh, I had a few more sessions. The river dropped again. Got no flow on it whatsoever. Uh, and I was catching fish, but two or three a session. Uh, but I just felt like I, like I needed a new challenge. I was catching really nice fish again on, on the Neen, but I just fancied a, a different challenge. And um, I'd heard, obviously, I know about the Great Ooze, um, and that is what I will be moving on to next now. Um, I've got myself some club books to go and fish on the Ooze. We've got, it's middle of Jan now, so I've got, I don't know, another six or seven weeks of river season left. I'm hoping to get on the Ooze and... Uh, start that campaign so that's going to be really exciting i can't wait to get on the ooze you never know on there i mean it, as with all rivers it's been it's been troubled with predation but on there there is always the chance of a really special fish so fingers crossed uh no matches at the moment to be honest uh, time is of the essence at the minute you know we're, um with a baby and stuff i'm just sort of nipping at nipping getting sessions in when i can really and uh there's been nothing that's I wanted to go on the drains a bit this winter, but the fishing's been poor. And for me to, at the moment, this might sound bad, but for me to prize myself away from the chub fishing to go and catch two or three pound of roach on the drains, I just, I, I don't know, just not feeling it at the moment. So um, as soon as the rivers close, the match kit will be back out and we'll have a nice little spring campaign, probably on some local carp venues, and then hopefully fish the Trent a lot in the summer. That's the plan. Um, but that's it so far for the river vlog. Some nice footage there, some lovely fish. Hope you'll agree. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Oh, just a quick word on tactics. It's all been cheese paste fishing. I've not caught many on bread this season, um, but the rivers are going low again now. The, the ooze, I've been watching the river levels low. It's going to be clear, so we could do with some rain. Fingers crossed for some rain. Um, but cheese paste has been doing the damage up to now. Um, so yeah, thanks for like and subscribing. Apologies, it wasn't like an on the bank style video, but because I'm trying to flit in and out like short sessions whenever I can get a bit of time, um, it's quite hard to go and, and like set the camera up. So what I've been doing is actually sort of filming the fish that I've been catching rather than um, filming the session, so to speak. So hopefully that works for you. Uh, nice little chub campaign. That's the Neen probably. I probably won't go on there now until probably next winter. Um, it's, obviously, it's nice fishing the ooze because it'll be a new challenge. I don't know any of the swims. Uh, I don't know the stretchy is. I don't even know where to park yet. So um, that's going to be a totally new challenge for me. And like I say, the chance of something special. So big perch. We caught a nice big perch this, this uh, season. Love to have caught a bigger one. The ooze has got some real big ones. So you never know. Might even have a chance to get the, the low tackle out if the conditions allow. Um, and then hopefully a massive chub to report on our next video. So thanks everybody and we'll see you soon.